Hey there, welcome back to the Measured Golf Channel. We're so happy that you're tuned in and learning about ground reaction forces, and we've gotten a lot of questions about each of the three forces that we use. So we know that there's vertical force, we know that there's torque, and we know that there's horizontal force, and we measure these using our force plates, and we use the swing catalyst dual motion plates so that we can look at each foot individually as well. So now that we understand kind of what's going on, we're gonna take an in-depth look at each force individually, starting with vertical force. So what we want to do is we want to define what it actually is, as well as actually talk about the application in the golf swing, because that's what's really important to what we're doing versus just kind of being gearheads and nerds and kind of understanding all these vectors. So let's try to see if we can't find some ways to help better understand vertical force and how we use it in the golf swing. So let's start with the definition. So we're going to first take a look at vertical force. So by definition, it's pretty easy to understand. The vertical force is simply the movement up down of the center of mass by creating forces that exchange through the ground that create motion. So real simple, gravity is pulling you down and you're resisting. So all the time gravity is acting on us and all the time we're pushing away. And that away from the ground motion is our vertical force or us standing up as human beings. So now that we understand the definition, what does that actually mean in the golf swing? So I know that the ground reaction force information is relatively new and we've been trying very hard to kind of get information out to the public based off what we're seeing. And a lot of people have been taught that vertical force is more of a squat jump kind of move. So what I mean by that is people have been taught to go to the top of their golf swing, then squat, then try to release the golf club up and through that way. And the problem with that line of thinking is that in golf, we have a pressure shift and have to move low point forward during the swing. Therefore, I can't use both my legs to stand up, and that tends to actually be what causes quote-unquote early extension. So vertical force is actually primarily produced by the lead leg. So as a right-handed golfer, that would be my left leg. As a right, or I'm sorry, as a left-handed golfer, that would be my right leg. So we need to understand that if vertical force is primarily produced by the lead leg, then we need to understand how the lead leg works to produce that in the golf swing. So now that we understand the definition and how it actually works in the golf swing and what actually produces it, the lead leg, let's talk about how this actually works. So like we said, it's primarily been taught as a jump squat, but in reality, it's just the lead leg doing most of the heavy work here. So what we want to do is we want to learn how to move this left leg in a way to where we're going to be able to access that vertical force, which is going to produce the downward motion of the club head and allow us to not only hit down, but lo move low point forward as well. So with all that being said, the application of golf sometimes is messy because we as human beings are messy. So when we talk about the application of vertical force, we also have to talk about the other forces as well. So one thing that's very interesting about the golf swing is that when a lot of people hear up and away from the ground and they try to use both legs to contribute to this, what they end up doing is moving towards their toes from their heels during the golf swing. And the issue with this is that it also moves my pelvis towards the ball. And now all of a sudden there's not as much room for the golf club and my dynamic lie gets too vertical. And that's what you see a lot of people calling early extension. So when we create the up in the golf swing, we don't simply want to use both legs and move towards our toes and extend through our body. We actually want to create torque to create extension, which creates the lift. So what I mean by that is in the golf swing, we actually want to get to the top of our swing, nice and tall here, and then what we actually want to try to accomplish is we want the sensation of moving the left foot backwards behind us. So if you see that, I'm moving my left foot directly behind me, and we can see that that's obviously going to take my pelvis and open it as it opens my chest as well. And what that's doing is creating torque or a twist with my upper body against my lower body. And now we can see that this leg is more extended, so there's our vertical force. And now from here, I'm just releasing the club around the body, and we can see that the left leg is staying nice and tall and supporting my body. So using vertical force isn't necessarily thinking about trying to do a squat, because what we actually can see using these swing cows dual motion plates is that the squat, believe it or not, actually happens when you're tallest at the top of your swing. 
Okay, well we all know that speed sells. And one of the coolest things to look at is sometimes these long drive guys, right? And one of the reasons it's so cool is that they don't actually move that much differently in terms of how they make this speed, and they use the forces the same way we do generally. The biggest difference is the magnitude and how dynamic that they can do it. So I think that we're gonna take a look here at Kyle Berkshire, obviously an amazing driver of the golf ball, but I wanna show you something and then we'll compare this to another tour player as well with a little more normal speed. And then we can talk about how this still applies to us with normal speed. So when we look at Kyle Berkshire, it's very important that we kind of look here at the top of his swing, right? So what we're looking at here is Kyle's moving up towards the top of his swing. Okay, he's not gonna move much more than that. And what we can see when we look at the vertical force, okay, how much he's pushing away from the ground, we can see that the vertical force is actually negative. So when we look at that, and we know that vertical force is primarily produced from the lead leg, when we see it go below the 100 threshold, he's actually collapsing that lead leg a little bit and weighs less on that. So if he's pushing less into the ground with his lead leg, that would be the de-weighting phase of the golf swing. So we want to understand that when we push up towards the top of our swing, we create a pressure shift to the right. And we can see here with Kyle Berkshire that he has definitely got his pressure more into his trail side than his lead. So we can see that the trail side is actually supporting the mass of the body and the lead leg is actually not pushing as much and de-weighting. So we're actually not trying to squat in the downswing because actually we squatted at the top of the swing. So what we wanna do from here is instead of trying to squat down, which is actually lowering my center of mass, and now I don't have enough time to stand up and access my vertical force, now what I wanna to try to do from here is like we said, we wanna to try to torque because that has to happen right after the shift. So I'm gonna shift, torque, and then from here I'm gonna stand up, right? And it's easiest for most people because we tend to sit too much, it's easiest for most people to get this feeling to where they take their left foot, pick it up, and access that lead leg getting straight, and then just letting this club rip across their body and letting the body kind of follow the club through. So that's a way better understanding of how we're going to better use our vertical force in our golf swing versus just trying to stand up on our toes. All right, so that was great. Kyle Berkshire's the man, smashes the golf ball. We all love to see that, but very few of us are actually physically capable of creating that kind of speed. So now that we're looking at somebody else who's got a little more close to normal speed, we're looking at the tour player, Brian Gay. Brian Gay still makes way more speed than the average golfer, but once again, I wanna show you that even though the magnitude is much less, the timings are still the same. So when we look at Brian Gay at the top of his swing, we can see that at this moment, he's actually got 73% vertical force in the uh, system here. So we're looking at this on a single plate. Unfortunately, we don't have the dual, but when we look at the pressure and stance, we can also see that Brian has 69% of his mass or his pressure in his trail side. So we know that the trail side is supporting and we know that we're de-weighting that lead leg once again. So like we said, the top or the bottom of the squat, I should say, is actually happening at the top of the swing. So once again, from the top of the swing to access our vertical force and have better timing, we wanna create that torque first. So we can see Brian is going to shift left. So the purple is his uh, horizontal movement. So we see that he spikes that first, then he spikes his torque. So that's the twisting. So we have to twist to stand up and then there's the stand up. And we can see that that's well before we're getting the club back to the ball. So that way we can transfer that energy through the club and to the ball. All right, and finally, the big reveal, right? So talking normal speed. So for myself, I swing the driver somewhere between 103 and 108 miles an hour. That tends to be where I live, which is once again, well above the 90, 95 mile an hour average of most people that play golf. But once again, it's still much closer to normal speed, even much slower than Brian Gay, right? So when we look at this with me, even though my graphs aren't as pretty as I would like them to be, and we're working on that, we can see that I'm still de-weighting at the top of my swing. So that timing is still holding true, right? So the vertical force is still less. I'm still shifting left first, then torquing kind of, <laughs> and then standing up. So we can see that the order of these forces is very, very important in terms of the kinetic sequence. And we can also see the magnitudes are very important in terms of matching to who you are in your anatomy. 
So we hope that you found this helpful and understand vertical force slightly better. But most importantly, we hope you understand the application of vertical force and how you apply it to your golf swing. Because at the end of the day, this stuff is all fun stuff you can play around with at home. So remember, we don't want to feel like we're getting up on our toes and extending through our tippy toes. We want to feel like we're actually trying to move our pelvis more away from the golf ball and the transition. So we hope this first part in this series of understanding ground reaction forces is helpful. And now you better understand not only what vertical force is, but also how we apply it in the golf swing. So make sure if you like this video to click uh, subscribe and like and share this video out because like we said, this is the first of a series. And as we release these, you're not gonna wanna miss them because we hope that what you're able to do is to take this information and make your golf game way better. So make sure to click all the uh, like and subscribe buttons. And until next time, keep grinding.